What's up guys? Welcome to my channel. If you are a subscriber and you are coming back, well thank you so much for coming back. I truly appreciate all of your support. If you are new here, what's up? My name is Liz. I am a faith mama, military wife, and lover of all things life. If you like me, you like what you see, and you like the content that I put out there, please do not be afraid to hit that subscribe button and join my lovely tribe. I would love to have you. So today's video, we are actually going to talk about maternity care in the military. If you don't know, I am currently 36 weeks pregnant, so getting ready to deliver any day, any week now. And I figured I'd go over some of the things that you can, ex you can expect um, when receiving maternity care through the military. So, like I said, I am a military wife. My husband is in the Army. Let me just go ahead and put out some disclaimers, right? I am a spouse, so everything that I am talking about is directly my experience as a spouse. I can't really speak to the experience of an active duty service member who is pregnant. Um, we are also Army. I don't know if they do things differently on different military uh, branch installations. I'm not sure if it's very different. And then the third thing that I wanted to say is that I have always been on TRICARE Prime. If you are a military spouse, you know there's like TRICARE Prime and TRICARE Select or something like that. Um, so the things that I'm going to talk to you about are my experiences with TRICARE Prime. So when I say things are free, that's because I am TRICARE Prime and because I'm not a military installation is where I'm usually seen. Um, so yeah, I hope that you find this video helpful. I hope that you get some questions answered. If you're thinking about having a child, you and your spouse are maybe considering having a baby soon and your spouse is in the military, um, or maybe you're pregnant right now and you're kind of wondering what to expect uh, as you go throughout your appointments in the military. My goal is to give you that information. So let's go ahead and jump in the video. This is my second pregnancy and both pregnancies I have um, gone through the entirety of the pregnancy and delivered within the military uh, maternity care system. So um, they have been at two different installations. My first pregnancy with my daughter was at Fort Campbell in Tennessee, Tennessee slash Kentucky, um, but I say Tennessee because we lived on the Tennessee side. Um, and then this pregnancy with my son, uh, I will be giving birth at Fort Irwin, California. So the first thing that you can expect with pregnancies within the military is one, you're obviously going to have to get your pregnancy confirmed. That's the first thing that you are going to do. Um, so what normally happens is they will have like kind of walk-in hours at your primary care clinic, again, on the military installation. And you will go, at, go in during those walk-in hours, let them know, hey, I think that I'm pregnant. They're going to ask you, you know, when was your last period? Have you taken any pregnancy tests at home? You give them those answers and then they send you for a blood draw. You get your blood drawn and then normally the next day or within a couple of days, they will call you to confirm and say, hey, yes, congratulations, you are expecting. Um, at that point, they will probably make you an appointment to come in for your first uh, prenatal appointment. With that first appointment, a lot of times it's not until you're about like six to eight weeks along. I wanna say in both of my pregnancies, it was about that time frame that they scheduled my very first prenatal appointment. Um, so I know that it can be nerve wracking because most miscarriages occur in the beginning stages of that first trimester and you're sitting here like, bro, I just wanna get in, I wanna hear that heartbeat, I wanna know for sure, for sure that I am pregnant and that everything's okay. But don't feel like anything is out of the ordinary you're going to go to your first appointment anywhere between six to eight weeks at least within the military and within my experience with um, with military maternity care. Obviously, if like you're more of a high risk pregnancy situation, you've had high risk pregnancies in the past, they'll probably get you in sooner. But for me, I've always had normal pregnancies. So, I mean, each time there wasn't a reason to see me any sooner and everything um, thankfully worked out just fine. When you go to your first appointment, um, normally you're going to meet kind of with a midwife or a nurse. Um, and so you'll meet with them. They'll go over like the standard paperwork. They will kind of do one of those um, 
they'll do an ultrasound to figure out kind of how far along you are. You're going to meet like your doctor. Be aware, and this is both the same, both within the military and on the outside. Like it's possible that you're not going to see your same doctor every single time. I think that like on the civilian side, you probably can be like, no, every single appointment, I want this doctor. And if you really wanted to push that hard for it, you could within the military, but just be aware of this. And that is the fact that when you go into labor, there is no guarantee that your doctor is going to be the one that delivers you. It ha it's just gonna be whoever is on call during that time. Maybe you have a great relationship with your doctor and they're like, yes, call me anytime, I'm gonna come in there. But on the military side of things, whoever is there is who is going to deliver your baby. So I strongly recommend that you see all the doctors within the practice at the military hospital, just so that you meet them, you have a face, you've talked to them before, and it's not just like a brand new face, you know, <laughs> delivering your child on that day, right? That's just a little tip from me to you. Um, so you will meet with your doctor. Now, something that was really cool at Fort Campbell is they had something called centering groups. And so what that was, was that my appointments were actually in a group setting. And I was grouped with, I wanna say it was like nine other women, and we all were due around the same time. So our due dates pretty much were between July and August. I was kind of one of the last ones. I was due August 8th, and I was one of the last ones. Most of them were due more so in July. So we were all grouped together, and every single appointment was already scheduled throughout our entire pregnancy. So these appointments were actually like two to three hours long and we would go in and first we would all sit together like, hey, what's up girl, how you doing, how's it all going? And you would be with like spouses and active duty service members that were pregnant. So it was awesome because you just got to, you know, meet people and make new friends. And it was new moms who had never had children. It was moms who have had a couple children. So you got to learn from each other's experiences. But each, um, meeting or each appointment there was like some some point where we would learn about something right so we would learn about breastfeeding we would learn about the labor and delivery process we would learn about postpartum we would learn about what happens what changes our bodies go through throughout pregnancy and through the labor and delivery phase so it was highly educational and then you had that group of like sisters because <laughs> you guys were all Kind of going through pregnancy together, comparing experiences, waiting on each other's babies to come. It was really, really exciting. Everybody found out what, um, like, if they were having a boy or a girl, and we all came in like, do you know yet? Do you know yet? Oh, I find out this week. It was just really, really cool. I'm even still in a Facebook group um, with those same ladies, and people still post pictures of their kids and check in and say, hey, how's everybody going? How's everybody doing? How is Major Zoke's um, centering group? doing because our doctor was Major Zotes. Shout out to Major Zotes. He was amazing. I'm not going to lie. At first I was like, I'm going to have a dude that's going to deliver my baby. Like, <laughs> what the heck? No, thank you. Um, but it was amazing. He, I, I want to say he has like six kids, I think. And I think he delivered all of them. So he was so like pro us and like, you can do this. You guys are amazing. Y'all want to breastfeed? Go breastfeed. You don't want to breastfeed? That's fine, but he was just so supportive. He was the most amazing doctor, and I lucked out when I ended up having my daughter. He was there to deliver her, so it was just amazing. I know you won't see this ever, Dr. Zotes, but you are so awesome and such a blessing to the military community. I'm pretty sure you're retired right now, but happy retirement. You're amazing. So with the center group, like I said, you have your groups, and you go through all of that, and then, I mean, there really was nothing else that was different. I still got my appointments. I just did it in a group setting rather than an individual setting. The only other difference is that with the centering group, after we all had our children, they brought us in for one more appointment and it was like a baby shower for all of us. And we got baskets and we all got t-shirts that's like, I'm a centering group baby um, at Blanchfield Army Community Hospital. And it had like bottles and just all kinds of awesome things. So I don't know if that's done at every military, well, I know for sure it's not done at every military installation, but I recommend looking into it because like I said, it was a great program and I'm very thankful for that program. This time around at Fort Irwin, they don't offer that. Um, I am doing just individual appointments and so it's very similar to the outside world from what I understand. 
Um, the way that they do your appointments is you have one every four weeks and then once you hit about 36 weeks, no, 30, yeah, once you're about that, that final, final like month left, you're gonna go every two weeks. Again, this is if you just have a normal, no issues pregnancy. If it's a high risk or something like that, obviously you're going to be seen a lot more. But for me, I went just every four weeks was my appointment. So every month I had an appointment. And then just now, the last appointment that I had was at um, between 34 to 35 weeks. They scheduled my appointment. Um, I'll be 37 weeks. So I was 35. I'll be 37 weeks at my next appointment. I'm sure 39 at the next one. Within the military, again, if there's no other issues, you're only going to get two ultrasounds. So I know a lot of times people are like, I want to see my baby, but really, you, you don't see your baby that often unless you want to go off post and pay for like a 3D ultrasound or something like that. So you get your first ultrasound where you see the little baby, right? And you see the little tiny baby. And then um, you get your that anatomy scan. So you get to see the baby when it's bigger, making sure everything is all fully formed and functioning correctly. Um, Again, unless there's some other reason for them to do an additional one. For me, at my most recent appointment, my doctor actually said when she was like feeling my son, she was saying, you know, he feels really big. <laughs> so we're gonna have you do a growth ultrasound just so that we can kind of check for his size. Um, just make sure that there's, maybe we shouldn't like induce early or something like that. Um, so I will be getting an additional ultrasound. So that's exciting to see my baby and then get to kind of have an idea as to how big this baby is because I feel like he's huge. My husband says like, girl, you was not this big with Kaya. <laughs> and it's very true. I just feel so much bigger than I was whenever I was initially pregnant with my daughter. And uh, my son is just, I think he's a big one. But we'll find out uh, next week. So I guess I'll update you guys. Check out Instagram for that update. <laughs> All right, within the military, the military is very breastfeeding friend friendly. Um, a lot of times you have, well, I know in recent times we've heard like, we've been more focused on freeing the breast and breast is best and things like that. We're trying to get back to breastfeeding as opposed to formula feeding, which there is nothing wrong with formula. I was fed formula, my brother was fed formula. I have like nephews and nieces that were fed formula like that. It's, there's nothing wrong with it, right? Um, but, but I know that the medical field is trying to make breastfeeding much more friendly. And so that is the same in the military. Um, they are very breastfeeding focused and they definitely have lactation consultants and all of those people that are there to assist you. Um, when it comes time to deliver, um, at least in every experience that I've had, well, the past experience and the one that's coming up, they room you in with your baby. So there is no nurse nursery. Basically what you are doing is you're gonna get triaged, you know, checked in whenever you go into labor. They're going to put you in the labor and delivery room. It's called LDRP. It's labor, delivery, recovery, and postpartum. I wanna say is the fourth one. Um, but you do everything in that room, everything. So you're gonna have your baby there. You're gonna labor there. You are going to recover there. And then like you're gonna be feeding your baby there. Like your baby's staying in there in a bassinet with you so that hopefully you can establish a strong breastfeeding relationship. Um, a, breast, a lactation consultant does come around. They do ask you, how are you doing? Do you need assistance? Things like that. So I've heard that the breastfeeding friendly kind of um, approach has been bad in some people's experiences but again mine within the military maternity setting was amazing um, everybody was extremely supportive and we were all able to get through labor and delivery start breastfeeding and everything um, very successfully so i definitely recommend military maternity care in that aspect too Again, if you, that was not your experience, I'm so sorry because that genuinely makes me sad. Um, but my experience has been wonderful and from what I can tell after doing my tour and everything of the hospital and speaking to the doctors, um, I feel like this one is going to be just as wonderful. So when you're in the military, 
or take being taken care of by the military maternity care just know that your doctors are going to be soldiers they are going to be midwives right so there are some civilian like practicing people that work within the military maternity care um excuse me but like i said earlier my doctor was major zilt he was a soldier in the u.s army currently i have two doctors well my main one, Dr. Bannon, she, Captain Bannon, she is a soldier in the military. Captain Warner, he is a soldier in the military. I've seen him once. And then there is a civilian person, Dr. Musa. Um, so you could have a civilian. A lot of times they are going to be soldiers that are actually taking care of you. Um, they are doctors, right? They are accredited. So I wouldn't fear in going in, into that situation. But... If that's something that you're concerned about, you know, maybe going off post or physically picking like your OBGYN might be a better choice for you. Um, one of the other things that I want to say regarding your doctors is that you're kind of at the mercy of PCS season, right? Because we know in the military, we all move, we all PCS. And so it's possible that your doctor could PCS in the middle of your pregnancy and then you have to go ahead and get a new one. Or for example, here at Fort Irwin, we are very isolated. There was an issue earlier where doctors had left and new doctors had not come in in time, right? Or there was only one that was not enough. And so they were having to send women off the installation to drive 45 minutes or an hour, hour and a half to go to their doctor's appointments because there weren't enough doctors to take care of them. That can be very frustrating, but just also have that in the back of your mind. You have to be flexible. You have to know that unfortunately within the military, a lot of things are out of your control. Um, and so just be prepared for that. Be prepared for being at the mercy of PCS season, of people retiring, of people separating from the military, because all of those things take place. Um, and then at some point your doctor could be gone. Just be aware of that. That might be a question you ask them in the beginning. Hey, are you getting out of the military anytime soon, right? Are you PCSing? Are you moving anytime soon? Just so that I am aware of this. Just a good idea for you guys. So like I said, I have always been covered by TRICARE Prime. And what that means is that I get seen on the military installation. And then if I needed to see like a specialist and it wasn't available at the military hospital, then they would send me off base or off post to do that. Um, so part of TRICARE Prime is that everything is free. Everything is free. And so with my first pregnancy, all of my appointments completely free, never paid a copay. My labor, my delivery, my recovery, my stay in the hospital, completely free. Okay, so everything is covered. TRICARE also covers a breast pump for free. Um, and that's something that's relatively new once the insurance started um, kicking in and picking up breast pumps because with my daughter they did not do that at that time so the same thing is going to happen with this pregnancy I have all my appointments never paid a copay when I go and check in in the hospital I'm not gonna have to pay anything because I am covered by TRICARE Prime and no matter how long I stay or if God forbid there's like an emergency c-section or something like that I don't have to worry about receiving this huge bill because I am at a military hospital I am covered by TRICARE Prime and I am never going to have to pay any money out of pocket. Now, if you are a TRICARE Select, um, I believe that if you deliver at a military hospital, I don't think you have to pay anything, but then if you are out um, it, in the civilian sector, going to civilian hospitals and things like that, there, I think that you do have to pay like a copay and things like that. So um, that's something else that you want to research and be aware of because the cost of having a baby can really, really add up. Something I did learn recently, because I had no clue because I don't have a son, is that uh, in the civilian world, circumcisions are not normally covered for free uh, because it is considered like an elective procedure. So you do have to pay out of pocket for that within TRICARE as long as it's done within the newborn phase. And I believe it's between zero to 30 days after the baby is born, it is free. If it's done after that, then you do have to pay out of pocket. Um, so again, just do some research. Make sure you check into all those different things. But TRICARE is going, at least TRICARE Prime is going to cover all of your appointments, labor and delivery, um, breast pump, and circumcision within the first zero to 30 days. The next thing that I will say is that um, the stay in the hospital, it kind of, well, one, it's going to depend on where 
you are delivering at, right? So, and, and like what kind of delivery you have as an emergency or something like that. But with my first pregnancy, first child, two days in the hospital, and then it went home after that. Um, with this pregnancy, again, from my tour and talking to the doctors, what they did let us know is that if it is your first delivery, you will stay for 48 hours. And then if for any subsequent pregnancies and deliveries, normally you only stay for a day. And part of me was like, wait a minute. No, don't send us home after a day. I don't know what to do. Even though I've already had a child, even though she's five going on six, right? Um, I still feel like I don't know what to do because that was so long ago after I had her. Um, but just be aware and always ask your doctor, hey, what is the stay time after I give birth? Um, just so that you're prepared for that because it can be very scary uh, leaving the hospital after that. After you have your baby, they are going to schedule you kind of like your first appointment, that first well baby checkup that you have to bring them in for. So that's normally all done before you leave the hospital. With my first delivery, we actually had to take a class before we left the hospital. And it was like about safe parenting, about co-sleeping, you know, think like don't shake your baby, um, know when to walk away if you're frustrated, stressed out, angry, things like that. Um, so I'm not sure if they do that here at this uh, at Fort Irwin because they didn't even tell us that that would occur at Fort Campbell um, but that's just something to be aware of too and again I very much appreciate it like give me all the knowledge y'all know I haven't told you before and if you're new I'm gonna tell you right now I am a planner I am a researcher I gotta know it all so um, I very much appreciated having that extra class and having the tools and tips and techniques to deal with those long nights and things like that. So I think it's very important. And I really, really, really do feel like the, the military definitely supports us in maternity care and taking care of our children afterwards. Like the last thing that they want is a horror story to occur after you leave the hospital. So the final thing that I will say is about inductions. Oh, okay, two things that I have left to say um, is about induction. So, with my first pregnancy at Fort Campbell, basically they had said that um, the only way that you're going to be induced, unless it's like super medically necessary and an emergency, is that you have to hit um, past 41 weeks. And so that actually did happen with my daughter. Um, I was eight days past my due date. And so the way that they set it up was, you know, okay, you came in on your 40 week appointment. Okay, you haven't had the baby yet. So we're going to have you come in, or sorry, what you're going to do is if you don't have a baby within this week, once you hit 41 weeks, I want you to call every single morning. So be prepared to go into the hospital because basically on week 41, I called in the morning and said, hi, um, I am 41 weeks, so I am overdue. Um, do you have availability, availability to induce me? That day they said no. Okay, no problem, call back tomorrow. So then I called in the next day. Hi, 41 weeks in a day. Do you have availability to induce me? Sure, come on in. Be here at 7.30. Bam, walk in, get checked in, get induced. It actually turned out that I was in labor already. Um, but then that, that was basically their rule. Once you hit 41 weeks, they would be willing to induce you, but not prior to that. This time, and I don't know if it's just kind of the change um, the amount of time that has passed or if it's just this hospital's policy but this hospital says we'll induce you like at 39 weeks if you want to be induced like you don't have to have a reason to need to be we can induce you at 39 and I'm like well that's weird okay I don't remember that at the other one um, but I also think because I have again done research is that what they do there has been research excuse me that says that induction at 39 weeks can be safer than letting um, mothers go past that and go overdue. So they are now saying that babies are fully and completely developed at 39 weeks. They are term and you can have your baby at 39 weeks with like no worries, no issues, no concerns. And so I think that may be the um, route that they are taking. Also here at Fort Irwin, they have asked me a couple of different times, do you want to be induced? Do you want to be induced? So part of me was like, no, like stop it. I just want my baby come when he's ready. But again, like I mentioned, we are so isolated that our anesthesiologists and people like that, a lot of them work an hour, hour and a half away. So if I get there in labor 
and I need assistance immediately and they're not there, guess what? I'm waiting an hour and a half or longer to get that help that I need. So again, it may be beneficial to induce. That's kind of your personal choice, your personal preference. I am not advocating one or the other. In fact, me and my husband are still discussing this, trying to determine what is best for us, especially amid this coronavirus pandemic. You know, do we induce, do we have it more controlled? Do we make sure that everything is in place or do we just let it just be, let it, let our son come when he comes and kind of fly by the seat of our pants, I guess? <laughs> I don't know. So that's something that we are working on and, and kind of trying to think about. Um, the final thing that I was going to mention was about birth control. So um, they are going to ask you kind of what your birth control options are, what you're thinking about. I mean, you can tell them nothing. They'll tell you what is available. One thing is that you, I have heard horror stories throughout the military that people who want to get their tubes tied have been told no because they're too young or, oh, you, you have a boy, you might want a girl or does your husband want this? Does He needs to sign off, different things like that. Um, I never inquired about having my tubes tied with the first pregnancy because we kind of were weighing our options between having another one or not. This one, I did ask about it, and I did ask, is there going to be an issue with me wanting to get my tubes tied? Um, my doctor essentially told me no. Like, if you want your tubes tied, that's your business. We're willing to do it. Um, you can't normally, at this hospital, you can't get it done right after delivery just because of the way, how isolated we are and how hard it is to have everything lined up perfectly to get that done. Um, but she essentially told me no. Um, it's perfectly fine. You can get your tubes tied if you want to. The second doctor that I talked to, um, because they make a note in there, okay, considering tubal ligation, she said, are you still considering it? And I said, um, kind of, sort of, but now I'm more so leaning just towards getting the copper IUD, because that's what I had before I got pregnant, and um, I kind of don't want to undergo major surgery. I know that I don't want another child, but I want, don't want to undergo major surgery as well. Um, and so she kind of was more so like, yeah, you're young, and you don't know, maybe you want more kids. And I kind of felt like, no, I know what I want. I'm just choosing this option because I don't want to have surgery. Like, don't try to tell me that I'm not sure I could change my mind. No, ma'am, no. Um, so just be aware, you may have to push. You may have to fight and say, this is what I want. This is my body and I am going to have my tube side. And that's just what it is. So that's the one kind of downfall that I have seen is sometimes people don't really listen to you. <laughs> Um, but just make sure that you kind of fight for yourself and advocate for yourself, for your family, for your children. All right, so there is a couple of things that I was gonna show you really quick. Drop my folder. This, I'm not gonna show you inside of it, but basically they're gonna give you a folder with all of your pregnancy information, safe medications to take, just kind of like beginning information for you. Um, they give you this book, Pregnancy and Childbirth. I don't, I haven't, written in it or anything because I did all that with the first pregnancy but it goes like week by weeks um, trimester by trimester what you can expect how to deal with different symptoms um, different tests that will be going on you can chart like your um, blood pressure your weight all these different things helpful parental information there's a lot of good resources in here and I got this with both my pregnancies so here at Irwin and also at Fort Campbell so I know it's kind of army wide that they give this out this one I did not get at Fort Campbell. This is a pregnancy calendar. I also have not filled it in. I don't know, I guess I was busy. But basically, drop the stickers. It came with stickers, and you can just write like weeks one through four, weeks 20 through 24, right? It again, has information on what to expect in your pregnancy during those weeks throughout the phases of your pregnancy. So they give you some goodies, um, but that's basically all that they kind of hand out to you. <laughs> All right, guys, so that brings us to the end of this video, maternity care in the military. I know it was a quick overview, and you're probably like, girl, that was so jumbled. I know, because I was just kind of going off the top of my head, and I was just going over everything that I could remember from this pregnancy and from my pregnancy almost six years ago. So I do hope that you got some valuable information out of it, out of like what you can expect. If you have specific questions, Hit me up down in the comments and also hit me up on Instagram. I'm more than happy to answer any questions that maybe you're left with after this video. So again, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up. If you have not subscribed, girl, hit that subscribe button and join my tribe. And I hope 
that you will come back next week for another video. Until next time, later loves.